Okay, so the first thing I'm doing here, I have to create an API key and add it to my OCI user. So I'm using OpenSSL for that. I have to generate a, a PEM key with a 2048 bit long modulus. And from that, I'm gonna also generate with RSA the public key from the key that I just generated. And this public key is the one that I'm gonna have to upload to OCI. So this is gonna allow me to use the OCI SDK with Python because I want to use and work with Python in this project. So here I'm checking the fingerprint and I will check that the fingerprint when I add this private key, the, this public key to the OCI console to my user, I will check that the fingerprint is the same just to make sure that I'm not making any mistake. So I'm going to upload the public key that I just created. And here you see that the API, uh, the API key fingerprint is the same, right? It ends in 13.57. So I'm copying this configuration file preview because this is a file that I'm going to have to create on my working directory and I'm going to paste all of it here. And the thing that I have to change here is the path of the key file of my private key. So I have to give it or specify where I stored my private key. Great. Okay, so I'm saving it now. And now I go to my editor and let's see. I'm going to create this new file called validate OCI config just to check that the configuration for the SDK has worked correctly. So first I have to import OCI, which is a package that you have to install on your virtual environment. And then I'm going to load my configuration file from this file. And I'm going to give it the profile name because you can have different different configurations if you're working on different tenants or different compartments. So this validate config is going to allow me to to check if this configuration works correctly. So now I'm running my newly created script and you see that I get this error saying that the profile default has not been found but that's just because I just put it on lower capitals. It needs to be default with with uh, with capital letters, and this is the, the first script that we're gonna see the image classification. So I'm invoking with the o OCI SDK. I'm invoking the image classification, right? So the first thing I need to do is to create a bucket in object storage, and I need to put the images that I want into the bucket. You, of course, you can also do it in line, but I prefer to do it with uh, OCI because it's just very inexpensive and you can have all your images there stored instead of having it in, in your local files, which is going to uh, be, you know, very costly for your SSD or for your HDD. And now that I have my, my bucket, I have to extract some information from the bucket. Uh, first, of, of course, I will upload the pictures. I have my 14 pictures of dogs, cute dogs. I decided that they they should be dogs for this. And yeah, you see that there are no deleted objects. And now I'm getting this uh, namespace for the bucket. This is the first thing that I need to put here, the bucket namespace. You can put it right here. Awesome. And then that this is going to be the name of the bucket also required and the object that I want to process. Imagine that I want to process just one image. And lastly, I need the compartment ID where my bucket exists. So I'm going to go to compartments on my OCI panel. I'm going to look for my own compartment and I'm going to copy the OCI ID. 
and I just put it here. And here for the request ID, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a randomized number because I don't want to trace it, but this is very useful if you want to trace what, have, what, what you have been doing in case uh, there are some errors on something. On OCI, you can also check the error with this OCI number. So I'm just creating a random number here with the random library on Python. A number between 0 and 500,000, it doesn't matter. And yeah, now if I run this, it should work fine. Let's see. Okay, it says not authorized, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so probably I'm going to enable logging in order to see what's going on here. So I'm just going to copy the documentation and I'm going to enable logging like this. So I just import logging and I'm going to enable debug logging. So logging dot get logger OCI and set level debug. You can find this in the documentation that I put there on line 12. So now I'm going to go into my config file and I'm going to add a new parameter called log requests equal true. I save it and now if I make the same request, it should tell me some additional information. But before that, the last thing I need to put is the model ID. But since I'm using the standard ID, I don't need to put any... This is only if you're using a custom vision model, but we are using the default one. So for this, I don't need anything. So if I run this now, it's gonna... Okay, it, it already returns the JSON file that I want. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to put it into a file so I can inspect the JSON object better. So let me do that. New folder. And here I'm going to put the output of my first analyze image. All right. So Okay, I can see that I have a lot of info, so I'm going to put it on the side. And, okay, I see that there's a lot of stuff. The confidence and the labels of the image. So it's probably a dog, which is correct. But it also tells me that I have vegetation and stuff. So I'm going to process this JSON file on Python. So I have to import JSON first. And now that I have JSON, I'm going to... Well, I like uJSON, which is like very sped up version of the standard JSON file and I'm going to add it to the requirements file. And now that I have this uh, library, and this is sped up of course because otherwise it would be too costly. But basically what I'm doing here is first of all checking that my JSON object is well constructed so I don't have any issues in case the JSON object is returned but doesn't have the structure that I want. And then I'm going to process the set of labels and I'm going to print the name of the label and the confidence score of each one of the labels. So if I, yeah, I'll just fix this and I think that should be it. Yeah, you see that I get hundreds and hundreds of classes sorted by the, the level of confidence returned by the score. So the most probable uh, the pro most probable ones are the ones at the beginning. So I can also trim this by myself or I can also incorporate a trim or a maximum number of predictions on the request, on the original request, but I don't want that. So I'm creating a most probable list just so I don't have to print all of them. I just want the three most common. So it, it tells me that it's dog, vegetation, and metal on the picture. So now I just want to, just for example, um, just to show you that it can be, these lists can be modified as you want. I just want those results that have a higher confidence than 90, just in case that there are, the so the, the cutoff will be 90 in this case, but you can put it whichever value you want, you see. 
All right, metal, fur, dog, paw color, etc. And yeah, that's it. Uh, now I would like to test out the same, but instead of using the classification, I am going to use object detection. So for that, which is the second, uh, the second service that uh, OCI Vision has. So the same, I'm, I'm going to print out the request. I'm going to save the JSON output into another file. And I'm going to do kind of the same processing that we have done with image classification, but in a different uh, Python file. And now I would like to talk about these normalized purchases that you see, which is the result that we get from the API, right? So for that, let's go and see an example image, like the one that you see here with the dogs. So the normalized vertices of a bounding box, which is just a rectangle, like in any, any picture. And considering that we start counting from the top left to the bottom right, the rectangle is represented by four vertices, right? Which are joined by lines. So if X is the width and Y is the height of the image, a normalized vertex represents the percentage of the width or the height of the image multiplied by the number of pixels of the of the image. So in this case, for example, I'm obtaining vertex number one, multiplying 1920, which is the height, times the amount of the normalized vertex that, that the API results. And vertex number two, we do the same, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that is how you interpret a normalized vertex. It's width and height independent. You just need the percentage of the screen that it represents. So this is what I'm doing here. A normalized vertex in, in this example would be 0 0.25, 0 0.75. That would mean if we start counting from the top left, we multiply 0 times 25, uh, 0 0.25 times 1920. And that will give us the X coordinate of the first vertex. And then we have to do the same with the height. So here I'm dividing the picture by four, right? The vertex number one is in this line, but in this red line. And now we have to find the Y coordinate of the vertex. So considering that the top left is the pixel number zero, X zero and Y zero. Now I'm going to split the image again on four, on four parts. Of course, this is uh, an estimate. I'm not doing it. I'm doing it with paint. But here is vertex number one in my case, if it's 0 0.25 comma 0 0.75. And you'll see here that on OCI, these rectangles are represented by all four vertices, but on OpenCV, they are represented by only two vertices, V1 and V3. So V2 and V4, they will be useless for us. And we have to do this conversion in order to not make any mistakes. So this is exactly what I'm going to do here. Instead of taking just the four points, I will just have to create an open CV rectangle, but with point one and point three with the representative vertices, right? So, and not only that, I will have to multiply the result on OCI by the width and the height of the image. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just putting Point 0.1 equals point 0.1 and point 0.2 equals point 0.3. Point 0.2 and point 0.4 are just going to be not, not used. And then for the image size, I just have to obtain the width and the height of the image and the channel, but the channel I'm not going to use. So I will just leave it blank. But yeah, I have to obtain the width and the height of the image in order to multiply it by the normalized coordinates that were returned by OCI. And now with the pillow library on Python, I'm saving the image. And once I run this, you will see that something interesting happens. The image is in a weird color set, right? You see here that it's like blue. And this is what it should look like. This is the original picture with the bounding box drawn on top of it. And the issue about that is that 
the color scheme that the image has been saved is in GBR and not RGB. So we have to change the color scheme of the image because this is the color scheme that's returned originally. And we have to make the transformation with that function that you saw there in order to transform it to the proper colors, the, pro the colors that are usually shown in our pictures. And after that, we can just save the image whenever we want because it will already have the correct color scheme. So we are done with our pipeline. And that's all for this video. I hope that this overview of the OCI Vision service was useful for a lot of you. And don't forget to check out the documentation and all the sample code in GitHub. You have a repository called OCI Vision AI with all the things that we are seeing, all the outputs, the images that we saw in this video, and also some scripts. So you can implement this easily into your already existing applications, or if you're looking to develop something new on AI with our service, you're welcome to do so. Thank you.